everyone. Today we're going to learn about the striker stair chair and the striker stretcher. First, we're going to go with the stair chair. The stair chair here can found in the, be found in the side compartment of the ambulance. It will be folded up in the ambulance like this. So whenever you pull it out, so you want to fold it out to a seated position. This device is used whenever you have a patient who lives inside of a tight compartment home, like a trailer, or if you have to go down a lot of stairs. To get them in and out, it's a whole lot easier. This is a safer on a paramedics or empty basic, or anybody else for that matter, for their back and safety. So the components of this stair chair, we're gonna start with the straps here. These straps are a four point harness. There are four straps. You have the straps that go across the middle here in the center. And these two go across the patient's chest and over their arms. So these straps are gonna go over their chest, secure here in the center. And these two points go through the metal pieces and interlock and lock seatbelt fashion. They can be loosened and tightened on either end. Here you can find them loosened or you can tighten. From here you've got the backrest and this contoured seat that's uh, used mainly for patient comfort. Here it says it's a max weight of 400 pounds. So if they're any larger, it's not a very good device for that. Here at the bottom, you will find some hand handles. The feet handles are used whenever you're taking a patient down a flight of stairs. You want to hold on to them down here at the bottom. To release them, you push the, the red buttons and they move in and out. Usually with less force. Here at the bottom, you'll find a feet um, a feet pedal where you can patients can rest their feet and you can secure them with a strap here at the feet. And you can tighten those as well. You'll find some small wheels and the larger wheels. The larger wheels are used mainly whenever you're going across a bumpy surface uh, or an uneven surface. As you'll see, this thing glides with, that, with ease on concrete and other flat surfaces. This is mainly in good use for whenever you've got a patient in a small home that you're not able to get the stretcher in and out of easily. The stair chair is easily maneuvered with one person when wheeled or two persons going up and down the flat stairs. Here on the back part of the stretcher, or stair chair, sorry, you'll find that there is a, a bar up here at the head. With this bar, you want to take this lever and gently pull on it and it lifts it up to an upright motion. And this can be used to lean the patient back and roll them or to roll them down the flight of stairs. To release this, you let it down. Here you'll find some more, another set of handles. To release them, you'll push the red buttons in. And these are also a way to guide the stair chair. Release these. These tracks on the end, you push the bar up and it releases the tracks. The tracks on here are made out of Kevlar. They grab a hold of the stairs and use the stairs to go down in a downward motion, allowing the weight to be, a lot of the weight to be bared on the stairs instead of paramedic holding onto the stair chair going down. To release that, you push the red bar, push it in. Up here on the bar, I forgot to mention, you have a strap velcro strap for whenever you've got a combative patient or a patient that you want to hold um, in an upright position you can apply this around their head in a hold position it's not used very often but it's there for if needed down here on the bottom there's another red lever this red lever allows you to release the stair chair back into a folded position to allow you to put it back in the ambulance but for now we're going to leave it open Thank you. 
we have a lever, a little red lever here underneath that you can apply pressure to when it raises the head of the bed to a 90 degree angle. This is called a Fowler's position when a patient is sitting upright at a 90 degree angle with their legs up, 90 degree Fowler's. You can put a patient in semi Fowler's position or you can have them in a prone position. That's the prone position. Normally you don't want your patients to be in a prone position on a stretcher. We're going to lift this back up to a 90 degree angle. We also have the securing bar at the head of the bed here. This allows you to put the stretcher into the ambulance and secure the locks, allowing, not allowing the stretcher to roll back out of the, stretcher, out of the ambulance. Um, there, where the red places are on this bar, you do not want to put your fingers whenever someone's lifting it in there. It will mash your fingers. This red bar underneath this vinyl mesh here. You can use it to lay your supplies on or your jump bag or monitor, whatever you need at the time. It's just a, a place for you to place your belongings. Um, the red bar under here allows this part of the stretcher to fold down, allowing the bed to be at a 90 degree angle flush. This way you can maneuver around decks and small confined spaces and the patient's not able to walk. Um, it's very handy to, to to put it back into normal position. Of course, you've got it down in this position. All you have to do is apply it up with motion and it locks. When you hear that pop, it means it's locked. All right, these upward wheels, um, whenever you're putting the stretcher into the back of the ambulance, loading it in, you'll have these large wheels that will allow you to maneuver into the ambulance. The lower wheels down here on the bottom allow you to roll across the floor. There are locks down here, this is in the lock position at the moment. They are on the bottom right and left wheels, which allows you to lock the stretcher if you're going uphill or downhill and you don't want your bed to roll away. You can put them in a locked position as pushed down or an upward position is unlocked. All right. Points that you do not want to put your fingers, if you'll follow me here. You do not want to put your fingers here, here. If you are, you, if you have an unloaded stretcher, meaning a patient is not on the stretcher, and you're having to lower the stretcher to help a patient onto it, or you're having to maneuver it for something else, you can put your foot on the bottom bar and your foot hand here on the, usually your right hand. Pick up lower the bed. Now you have a bed where you can put a patient sitting down in the, where they can sit down and sit in position. To so lift it back up, put your foot there and in a upward motion or pull in on the bar, lift it up, apply pressure on with your foot. Do not do this with a patient on your stretcher. Always use a two person, one on the, on the upper end, one on the foot end to lift the stretcher up and down. To make a bed. Why am I assisting your head? You mean yeah. So this is the head of the bed and that is the foot of the bed. To properly make a bed, you want to take your sheet and lie it flat down on the bed. You'll take either end of it and tuck it under. That way it's easy to put in. Do you want to lift the right hand side or your partner's left hand side? And lift the opposite side, make sure that all corners are all tucked in properly. You'll also take a pillowcase. I always like to lie my pillowcases down flat with their pillowcases on them. And a sheet or a blanket and or a blanket. And you want to take your straps here that go across the center of a patient's stomach or abdomen. And you want to lock them into place. Pull that tension down top. You want to take this access that you have here. Double it over and double it over again, tucking it under. This makes a presentable strap. Same for the foot strap down here. Double over, double over, underneath. Up here on the head of the bed, you have a four point harness that allows you to secure a patient better than it would be with just the, the abdomen and foot strap. These straps are particularly used in combative patients or patients that you have a worry that they're going to fall over. Maybe a patients who've had a stroke or 
someone that you're concerned that they may fall over to one side more so than the other. So you've got these four parts. You've got the two parts that go across their chest and over the shoulders and across their chest and secure here in the middle. You want to take your seat belt and go through the metal clips and secure in the seat belt part. You can tighten on either end. You can tighten over the shoulders. You just want to make sure that you give the patient enough room that you're not secure, you know, strapping them down so hard that they can't breathe or have make them hurt worse if they're having any chest pain or anything of that matter. All right, now that we've done this, we're going to properly load it into the back of the ambulance. From here, we're going to open the doors to the ambulance. You've got your right hand door you want to open first. Out. And then you want to open your left hand. Here in the ambulance, you will see that you have a stretcher mount mounted into the back of the ambulance. You have the bar that releases it, and to, you push in pressure, and to release, you pull out. You have the bars at the head of the mount that allow your stretcher to lock in securely, and then the bar here at the bottom that catches that toggle at the end that I was telling you about. So to properly put your patient's stretcher into the ambulance, you want to pick up a little bit with this bar back here in the back. You want to make sure that it goes across this little yellow bar back here, and it's locked, because you'll see that it's locked, she's given it a flat tug. It's locked, it's in a secure position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Nicole over here. She's going to lift, she's going to apply some pressure to this red lever at the bottom and pick up on the wheels. We'll pick up the wheels in the bottom of the lever up here. Slide and get into the ambulance. As you'll see, the wheels go into the head, of where the head bar is. And it locks here, and you heard it snap. If you didn't hear it snap, it's not secured. So. Now that it's in here, it wiggles, it's not coming out. You push this red lever at the bottom, you push this inward motion, and it releases. This, this little bar here should fit into this bar there. Push in, pull back. It locked, secure. All right, to remove a patient safely, push in the bar here, holding onto the bottom lever for fun size. You pull your patient out. You're gonna have your partner hold onto the feet, Listen that bar, you'll hear it snap, putting the wheels back down on the floor, and then applying pressure in an upward motion, releasing the stretcher from the, the mouth and the angels. That, my friends, is how you put a stretcher together and put it in the back of the angels. Have a good night.